Hey, and welcome to Bad Movie Takes. This is the channel where I talk about movies you should definitely check out. Now, a lot of them are low budget, so you might not have heard about them, and other ones might have just skipped past your radar, but they're definitely worth seeing. I do a lot of YouTube shorts talking about movie recommendations, but I also do videos compiling a bunch of facts or information about a certain movie, or just a whole bunch of themes that I think are kind of interesting. I mean, I think they're interesting, but I, I don't know if you do, but let's, let's just go with it. So today is a prime example. A lot of movies come from comic books, especially lately, but even before that there's movies like Constantine and Blade and things like that. Nowadays there's the whole MCU and DC and just, you know, everything. But those are comic books and obviously very well-known ones, and I put together a list of movies that you might not have known came from graphic novels, and some comic books as well. Now you might have heard of some of the movies here, some of them you might not have, but the thing that really surprised me is known or unknown is how many of these movies actually came from graphic novels, and some of them were really shocking to me. So before I start rambling forever, let's get into 10 movies that you might not have known were graphic novels, or comic books. Now the Cold War was a horrible time in history and it was just absolutely insane. I mean, you had cities divided, spies, intrigue, secret police, everything like that. And of course the ever-present threat of nuclear war, which, you know, is bad. It's no wonder that screenwriters and just novelists in general have flocked to that era and just taken so much inspiration. And because of that, we were given this absolutely entertaining movie called Atomic Blonde from 2017. It drops us right into the time around the collapse of the Berlin Wall, and MI6 has learned that the KGB has stolen a list of secret agents working on both sides of the wall and obviously are intending to do some really bad things about that. Charlize Theron plays an MI6 agent that's been tasked to go across the wall and steal that list back by any means necessary. I mean, that task alone is extremely hard. Like, even if it went completely smoothly, like sneak across the border, I guess, get this list, get back without ever being discovered, and you know, that should be fine. That would be incredibly hard. But of course, that would be entirely too easy for this movie, because the moment Charlize arrives in Berlin, she finds out that she's been double-crossed and falls right into an ambush. So why not? Throughout this entire time, she's thrust into violent situations, double-crosses, backstabbings, the entire thing, which she handles with absolute brutal efficiency. The movie is incredibly flashy and just adrenaline-packed. But unfortunately, it did stop at only one movie, which is too bad because it's actually based on The Coldest City, a graphic novel that's the first of a series of a bunch of novels set in Cold War Berlin, which would have been awesome. Then they released it as a movie with no sequels or follow-ups, and it's just kind of too bad because this really could have been a whole series of things that I would definitely watch. We're just closing up, fellas. Coffee. I'm sorry, we're, we're closed. Oh, I know that. I do know that. Ah, shut up! You don't carry much cash here. <laughs> don't move. Do it! The next movie is very well known, but I did not know that it was a graphic novel, and it surprised the heck out of me. Maybe you didn't know that either, so we can be surprised together. A History of Violence is a 2005 action thriller starring Viggo Mortensen that is based upon a graphic novel of the same name from 1997. The whole plot centers around a small town diner owner that is just chilling in his little local establishment, that is until a couple spree killers come in and, uh, well, he stops. This bit of heroism was obviously incredible and it launched him right into national news, which as a small business owner would be incredible. Imagine you just have this this tiny diner that's just kind of having a few customers until the entire country knows about it, you would do so well in sales. The problem is there's a lot more to this diner owner than meets the eye, and it seems like he was actually there trying to just disappear from life and just have no one pay attention to him. That's the opposite of what happened. And as luck would have it, the mob also watches the news, and unfortunately for Tom here, that gets the attention of somebody who recognizes him. But not as Tom, but as Joey Kuzak, a mobster who was affiliated with the Irish mob. This sends Tom, or Joey I guess, down this incredible path of trying to confront his past while avoiding the law and protecting his family and just kind of keeping everything together. 
This movie was hailed as one of the best movies from the early 2000s, with its gritty noir atmosphere, incredible tense acting, and just this captivating story. Those bastards in the front think they own us. We'll be different when we get there. What do you say? We take the engine, and we control the world. When is the time? Soon. Now this is a movie you might not have heard about, and now with streaming services you might have, which is a good thing, but it's a shame that it took this long. And I'd like to say it's because it's some low budget, no name movie, but it's got a huge cast of characters, and uh, there's no other reason other than the fragile ego of one tiny little man. Snowpiercer is a 2013 post-apocalyptic movie where humanity has been reduced to a very small percentage that lives on a train that just circles the globe. It happened because we decided that we could engineer our way out of climate change and um, that didn't work. I mean, I guess it did stop climate change as far as global warming because it turned the earth into a giant snowball and left the earth's population stuck on this train, which is heavily segmented into classes. It's a win, I'm sure. It's based on a graphic novel called La Transpersonage and the director discovered it in a comic shop and as soon as he opened it up, he could not put it down. He read it cover to cover, just standing right there. We've all been there, right? Yeah. And I mean, he didn't just like the story, he decided he's gonna make this into a movie, but instead of cutting parts out of it and doing the typical thing, he decided to rewrite the whole thing in a movie format, but basically keep it together. The movie follows the leader of the lowest class of the train, leading a rebellion against the upper crust at the front of the train. This movie is, it is graphic, it is violent, it is super stylish, and it is just so well done. It's got these deep themes and plot twists that gives it sort of this Matrix feel, and that's just awesome. Matrix on a train, why not? I watched this movie on a whim and it was just incredible and just an absolute crime that it didn't get the attention it deserved. And this is why. So of course the movie was made, but Harvey Weinstein got involved and he decided that he didn't like the director's 126 minute cut and insisted that he cut 20 minutes out of the film. Said no, and just stood fast. So Weinstein relented, but because he's a giant man-child, decided that he's gonna slash it and just release it to a limited release audience. Well, even though it just got released to art house theaters, it had such a positive reception that Weinstein was like, wow, okay, maybe I will release it larger. And he released it to 150 theaters nationwide. It's not that many. But now because of streaming services, more and more people are seeing it and it is just awesome. So if you haven't seen it or haven't even heard about it, definitely check it out. It is, it's cool to see. All right. Yeah. Hold on, three, you like three. How many times have we been here? How many times? For me, it's been an eternity. Now Edge of Tomorrow is the first of two movies starring Tom Cruise in this list, but it is just awesome. The basic premise is most of Europe has been invaded by an alien race, and Tom Cruise plays Cage, a public relations officer who gets on the wrong side of some people and ends up being forced-ish to join the fight. Emily Blunt plays a badass sergeant that's in charge of training new recruits, including Cage, and that's what she does. Sends them off to the front. He goes into his first battle, which ends in a very decisive loss, and that's where things go weird. Because he comes back, and realizes that he's in a time loop, where he gets to fight the same battle over and over and over again. It's like Groundhog Day, with aliens, and guns, and horrible, horrible deaths. Through his repeated time loops, he's finally able to convince the sergeant of what's going on, and together they have to join up and figure out how to, like, stop this and win the day. Come on! when you wake up. It's based on a Japanese manga called All You Need Is Kill, and the movie was released to a huge success based on just the incredible action and really unique story. There was also a lot of praise for Emily Blunt's character because it broke the norms of having a female that needs a male to prop her up and win. In this case, she's actually the one training and propping up the male to, you know, get his act together. And she's not kind about it. At all. And I'll train you. Again, again. 
Your leg's broken. No, I'm good. I think we'd better start over. Oh, come on! A few more weeks, Jack. Then we can finally leave and join the others. Don't take any chances. Now, the second Tom Cruise movie on this list is Oblivion. It's a 2013 action sci-fi movie based on an unpublished graphic novel of the same And, name. like the first movie in this list, Tom Cruise is once again fighting aliens, which, if I remember correctly, I think that's the third movie he's in where he fights aliens, so I don't know if he's trying to tell us something. Just, you know. The year is 2077, and aliens have invaded Earth, causing humanity to have to flee to Titan, one of Saturn's largest moons. And you might be wondering why we haven't fled to our own moon. The answer's simple. Aliens blew it up. Yeah. An Earth's moon would be enough to have to cause us to flee the planet because of, you know, tides and things like that. But we took it a step further and decided to nuke the planet to win the war. Because, you know, winning. Jack and Victoria are one of the remaining humans that are left on Earth, and their job is basically to fix combat drones that are scouring the Earth looking for surviving aliens, as well as fixing hydro rigs and other repairs. Their mission is monitored by Sally, who's this lady that talks to them via video screen, and I think she's part, like, motivational coach or something. She's extremely creepy, but she monitors their mission and makes sure that they're on track. They're basically doing cleanup at this point and just waiting for their time when they're going to be able to take off to Titan as well and join the rest of humanity. Now if you watch this movie, Sally is a big enough red flag as it is and just the whole thing is kind of weird. The bigger problem to this whole thing is that in order to do this mission, Jack had to have his memories erased. I really, I struggled to figure out a reason. I'm sure there was a really good one, but yeah, to do basic repairs and fixing drones, you gotta get your memory erased. Sign up now. It's weird. Jack might be a bit of a slow learner, but he finally encounters some things that starts to tweak his mind, where he starts thinking that things just don't add up about the mission, the aliens, Sally, it's all just kind of weird. So naturally, he starts investigating, and that sends him down an incredible rabbit hole that I personally was not expecting. It was just amazing. Honestly, if you haven't seen the movie yet, I just go into it cold and just let it take you places, because it is extremely fun. And as for me, well, I make them look like accidents. <laughs> Everyday, ordinary accidents. The next movie I'm talking about is Accident Man, and I absolutely love this series. And if you were like me and can't wait for John Wick 4, then this is a movie you have to check out because... Well, you'll see. It's a 2018 movie starring Scott Adkins, who plays an assassin with a chip on his shoulder, who offs his targets by making them look like accidents, and then hangs out at a club with other assassins when he's, you know, between missions. Now, if that sounds like John Wick and the mechanic had a love child, you are completely correct, and I was thinking the exact same thing, until I looked it up. So it turns out this movie isn't a ripoff of the two others. It's its own thing, and it's based off of a relatively unknown comic series from the 90s called Accident Man. Now, it's relatively unknown, but definitely not to Scott. He was clearly a fan, and I think it had to have inspired his decision to go into the whole action movie stardom thing. Seems like as soon as he could, he worked at getting this comic turned into a movie, and finally, in 2018, Accident Man was born, and I am so glad. Now the basic story is Accident Man's ex-girlfriend ends up being murdered in a seemingly random attack, but when he starts looking into it, he realizes that she was targeted because of her activism. Now if that isn't a kick in the pants on its own, it gets worse, because he finds out that members of his own club were the ones contracted to off her. They didn't tell him, obviously. Well, this doesn't sit well for him, and it sets the stage for a heart-stopping action movie with nothing but gratuitous violence, incredibly unique characters, witty one-liners, and just a whole lot of fun. Now, what's better still is Accident Man 2 came out just this year, and I was a bit worried about it, because a lot of times sequels don't hold up to the original, but not in this case. It was just as good and super fun. Now, to deepen the ties between this and John Wick, Scott Adkins is starring in John Wick 4, and I seriously can't wait. So, yeah, you gotta check out this movie before you see that one, because why not? You ever heard the saying, never rob a bank across from a diner that has the best donuts in three counties? That's not a saying. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I get you what you're heard. saying, Maybe you but it's not heard. a saying. It is a saying. Okay. It's a saying now. Go! 
Everybody sit down on the floor. Fire and roll! And now we've got two guns, and based on the action and portrayal of everything in the movie, it's no surprise that it's based off of a comic book series of the same name. Two Guns is a 2013 action buddy cop movie starring Mark Wahlberg and Denzel Washington. They're both members of a cartel, and you're wondering how that makes it a buddy cop movie. I know you are. Well, here's the kicker. They're both undercover cops looking at taking down the cartel boss, except neither of them knows that the other one is an undercover cop as well. Which either talks about how good they are at undercover work or how bad they are at being cops. I'm not really sure there. I, it, we'll just kind of leave it hanging. Regardless, they're wanting to take down this cartel boss, and to do it, they're going to double-cross their partner, who they think is just a cartel member, not a cop. Well, when things go down, the big reveal obviously happens, and that sets the stage for a whole comedy action movie that is just way too much fun. It's based on a comic book, and they dive right in with full-blown action, witty dialogue, and just a huge sum of money. There's nothing new about this movie. I mean, it's a tried-and-true formula, and I guess it's tried-and-true because it works. And this movie does it extremely well, and it ended up being a lot better than I expected. He has no name. Grow must never fall into the wrong hands. Now he has come to the strangest place on earth. This is America. We don't have enlightenment here. We have strip clubs, Las Vegas, and HBO. You got it? No. Nope. Now when you think about it, this movie had to have been a comic book movie first, right? Bulletproof Monk is a 2003 action comedy starring Chow Yun Fat and Sean William Scott. Chow plays a monk with no name who's been tasked with protecting this ancient scroll that gives the wielder unlimited power. Of course, he's done it for about 60 years now and he's getting kind of tired, so he's looking for a new protector. Of course, that leads him to Carr, a streetwise pickpocket who's really self-centered and not really interested in, you know, protecting a scroll for the sake of humanity. But now the monk has to prepare Carr not only to care for the scroll, but also defend himself from the threats coming for both it and him. It's loosely based on a comic book of the same name, and it's really just entertaining. It's a great way of just escaping from reality for a few hours and just having a blast doing it. Oh my, what are we doing here? What are you supposed to do, is a bomb or something? No. I wouldn't touch that if I were you. How do I look? Like a hood ornament. Stand clear. What was that? The Rocketeer is a movie that made a huge impact on me as a child, and I'm really upset it didn't get as much of a reception as it should have. I mean, in 2021, The Guardian wrote an article titled The Rocketeer at 30, the glorious throwback flop that should have been a hit, and I fully agree. Quite honestly, I blame Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. It came out in the same year, and that Brian Adams song just mesmerized everyone and made them forget their frickin' marbles, including good movies, like The Rocketeer. I can't stand that song. Now back to the good movie, The Rocketeer is done in a really cool Art Deco style. It's got mobsters, dazzle, and of course a nefarious Nazi plot. Who doesn't need that? Our hero of the movie is a stunt pilot who, through a series of really weird accidents, ends up stumbling upon a prototype rocket pack designed by none other than Howard Hughes. This lands him in a mess between the FBI, mobsters, and Nazis, when all he wants to do is be a cool pilot and just chase after the girl of his dreams. Tell me exactly why this merchandise is so important to the feds. It's a rocket. A rocket? The entire movie is just a great escape from reality, and a throwback to the romanticized old Hollywood, with high-flying action and a surprisingly huge cast. Like seriously, if you watch this movie, you'll be like, I know that person. Hey, that's that guy from there. Oh, she's from wherever. It's, it's huge. Not surprising is The Rocketeer is actually created by a comic book writer and artist, Dave Stevens, in 1982, and it was meant to be an homage to the old serial heroes from the 30s to 50s. I wanted to be The Rocketeer so bad for Halloween. I even had an idea of setting up Pringles cans to be the rockets and spray paint. It never happened. Maybe one day. Makes me treat you the way that I do. Gee, baby, ain't I good to you? There's nothing too good for a man so true. Gee, honey, ain't I good to you? I know 
And now we have a movie that needs no introduction. It is The Mask from 1994, and it's based on a comic from Dark Horse Comics that grossed over $351 million. Now, at the time, that is the highest grossing movie based on a comic book ever. I mean, I'm sure now the Avengers want to have a word, but back then that was huge. He stars Jim Carrey and solidified himself as the powerhouse of the 90s, and it's the film debut for Cameron Diaz and just shot her into stardom. The whole premise is just this meek kind of guy that stumbles upon a magical mask that gives him incredible powers, and he just goes about and causes just absolute mayhem while chasing after the girl. It's absolutely fun and very clearly a comic book. Just don't watch the second one. It's like one of those movies that never happened, like Indiana Jones 4, right? It's just, it didn't happen. We stick with the first one and life is good. That's my list of 10 movies that were graphic novels or comic books first. Now, was there anything in there that surprised you? And if so, let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, drop a like and hit that subscribe button. I do videos like this as well as YouTube shorts on just kind of movies you might not have heard about. And I am hoping to put out more videos like this. So until then, thanks for watching.